Hey, hello. Okay. Uh, good morning, all of you. Today, uh, we are going to start our new machine process. Okay, under mechanically energy based non conventional machine process. And the process name is called ultrasonic machining. Okay. So, in this lecture, uh, in part one, we are going to cover the with the basic question that is what is meant by ultrasonic. Okay. Then we are going to uh, going for the block diagram of working of ultrasonic machining system. Okay. And then we we'll see the uh, working principle of ultrasonic machining. In short, it is called USM. Okay. So this is just a uh, points to be covered. Okay. Uh, so that I have mentioned here. And after that, in the part uh, uh, two, we are going to see the another uh, points. Okay, so let us start with the introduction. And in the introduction, uh, we'll uh, cover the first question is uh, that is, what is ultrasonic? Okay, so as we know that ultrasonic means what ultrasonic is a vibratory waves having frequency greater than the upper frequency limit of the human ear okay i once again repeat ultrasonic is vibratory waves heavy frequency greater than the upper frequency limit of the human ear now what is that upper frequency limit okay that means it is greater than or equal to 16 kilohertz okay that much frequency uh, more than that much frequency uh, if vibratory waves will be there or no so that time we can call uh, it is a ultrasonic okay now uh, again that 16 kilohertz means what 16,000 cycles per second okay uh, simply we know that now this is a ultrasonic now in that again uh, we'll have the different types of views okay so there are basically two types of views okay you can see here also there are two types of waves one of them is known as longitudinal waves okay uh, here i have written in the red color okay and another it, it is known as shear waves okay so these are the two types of the waves now in that again uh, in case of our ultrasonic machining usm okay we we normally use longitudinal waves okay in case of our ultrasonic machining we normally use longitudinal waves okay so they easily propagate in the solid as well as liquid and as well as in the gas okay so this is the first point about the longitudinal waves okay because these are easily propagate in solid medium then liquid as well as the gases okay and in our ultrasonic machine process normally we use the this type of uh, waves longitudinal wave okay now in that again in that again uh, uh, to generate the that waves we require some the transducer okay so in that again we have the longitudinal magnet restriction okay now the question arises what does mean by this longitudinal magnet restriction uh, okay so what happened if a, a ferromagnetic material is placed uh, in continuous changing magnetic field okay then what will happen so it results any changing in the length of your transducer okay now transducer means what it uh, convert the your electric energy to the vibratory energy okay that means the vibrations so again in that uh, what happened uh, if uh, a ferromagnetic uh, uh, material is placed uh, in continuous changing a uh, magnetic field that time it results in a change in length of your transducer and that is uh, placed in a continuously changing magnetic field so magneto uh, this magneto type transducer is uh, used uh, for your ultrasonic machining process okay magneto transducer it is used for your ultrasonic machining okay and they uh, are normally made up of the nickel uh, Permalloy, okay, the metal. Okay, in that again, forty-five percent is the nickel will be there, and fifty-five percent will be iron. Okay, so this is a composition, and there is another metal you can use that is called uh, permadeur. Okay, 
so in that again 49% cobalt will be there 59 49% uh, iron and 2% vanadium so this is uh, again uh, the composition of the permadeur okay so the material which is used for the manodes friction type transducer so that material are two two materials in that one nickel perme uh, perme alloy and second is the permadeur okay this is just uh, for your uh, information i am giving this okay actually this uh, in detail uh, we should not go but as a knowledge we should know okay again these transducers are made up of the uh, laminated sheets okay because there are certain reasons for it also okay to made uh, with the laminated sheet okay and this laminated sheets reduce the ed current losses okay that is why transducer are made up of the laminated sheets okay so if in uh, mcq or if in exam the question will arise uh, ask uh, which type of transducers uh, trans is used in ultrasonic machine then your answer should be this magnetostructive type transducer okay what is the function of transducer okay what is the function of transducer transducer means what just uh, tell me okay main times in physics uh, you might be heard about this okay. so once again i will repeat transducer is a electrical device okay which convert energy from one form to another form okay in some cases you can uh, uh take example like uh, your uh, microphones and loudspeaker okay again in the transducer uh, will have the some sensors okay and actuators also that we are going to see how the uh, your electric energy is going to convert into the vibratory energy okay because vibrations are uh, that are ultra um uh, sonic frequency vibrations will be there in this ultrasonic machine again uh, i will give one uh, another example of transducer that means uh, to convert the uh, some uh, energy sort of energy to sound okay or to convert sound energy to the electrical signal also okay so that is a transducer now come to the our main point that is block diagram of uh, this ultrasonic system here i have shown the block diagram you can see it. now here what are the ultrasonic transducers are there you no know? so that converts the your appropriate form of energy okay, into your ultrasonic waves okay why i am taking name ultrasonic because uh, we want frequency more than 16 kilohertz okay to uh, remove the metal from your word piece so that frequency we have to attain okay and for that purpose we require the this transducer and normally in the ultrasonic machining electrical energy is converted into the mechanical energy okay with high frequency electrical energy is converted into the your mechanical energy with high frequency of vibration okay now let us see the what is the uh, component which is required in this conversion so you can see first uh, we have to take the electric energy that means we need ac power supply then to generate uh, that ultrasonic waves we require generator okay again we have to convert that uh waves okay uh, to a uh, high frequency so ultrasonic transducer is there okay then to transfer the vibrations to your workpiece we need some tool okay so tool connector will be there and then that tool will vibrate with a high frequency and after that tool we need some medium Okay, in between your workpiece and your tool, so that medium means the in between that uh, your standoff distance or the 
or uh, nozzle tip distance you can call in terms of average or water jet moisture so that gap you have to fill with the some liquid and that's liquid normally here we are using abrasive slurry okay so abrasions which are coming from the tool that will transport through your that slurry abrasive slurry and through that abrasive slurry okay it will transfer to your uh, top surface of workpiece okay and due to the uh, impact of the that uh, abrasive particles okay having again the uh, high vibrations so due to that impact the metal will be removed from your workpiece okay so that impact uh, you will get from the kinetic energy and the hampering action okay so due to that erosion action uh, or uh, erosion of the, your workpiece metal will be there okay and due to that continuous impact of the abrasive particle uh, uh, due to the vibrations there thousands of craters will be formed on your workpiece now cat craters means what the small particles which are uh, removed from your workpiece Okay, the material which is removed from your workpiece it is called small craters okay so that craters will be the in uh, uh, thousands in number okay and then you will get the uh what are the required or desired cavities that means that you are finished component so this much or uh, this much uh we really, uh, need uh, elements okay so here i have shown the block diagram now in continuation of this uh, i will explain the with this diagram okay uh, your working principle okay so let us answer the what is the working principle of this ultrasonic machining process okay and the block diagram of ultrasonic machining system i have shown here okay once again i will tell that we have the you can see here we have ac power supply okay which is uh, connected to your this ultrasonic wave uh, generator okay and this ultrasonic wave generator it is connected to your this ultrasonic transducer okay then uh, whatever uh, whatever your uh, ultrasonic transducer is, is there no so that is connected to your tool connector okay which will uh, hold the your uh, tool okay so the uh, you can call it is tool holder or tool connector okay then ultrasonic uh, transducer will uh, produce uh, ultrasonic vibrations okay and which are uh, transport to your tool okay through this tool holder or tool connector okay then uh, tool will vibrate okay at ultrasonic frequency that means with high frequency and between uh, your uh, tool that is vibrating tool and your workpiece there is a slurry okay there is a slurry which is consist of your liquid as well as the your abrasive particles okay now that liquid may be your water and when this tool is vibrating at a ultrasonic frequency that time it is hitting thousands of uh, your uh, abrasive particle okay which are present in the your abrasive slurry okay and due to that hitting a uh, thousands time hitting Okay, these uh, uh, abrasive particles when they hit the your tool, no, that time they move towards the your workpiece. Okay, and that time large number of abrasive particle with uh, their high kinetic energy or high velocity, uh, they will collide with your workpiece surface, that top surface, and as a result of that, hammering action will take place, and they erode the material from your uh, workpiece. Okay, by creating thousands of very fine craters okay on your workpiece okay and after that uh, removal of the uh, craters you will get the fever finished the product or finished the component that means you will get the cavity on your workpiece okay so these are the components okay now in that again uh, uh, what happened in the workpiece uh, due to the uh, hammering or uh, that heating of the abrasive particle, so there is a tool. Okay, normally, uh, and uh, thousands of the abrasive particles will be there under the your tool. Okay, you can see here also. This is a your transducer. Okay, you can see the winding is there, and this is a concentrator where you can attach your tool. Okay, so this is a tool uh, we can call our tool holder. And what are the tool is there? It is also called horn. Okay, and uh, there uh, should be some uh, small gap. It is called 
that uh, inter uh, that stand of distance okay and in between that small gap we have to give a abrasive slurry you can see here here also and then work piece is there so there is a tool and thousands of fabric particles are there under this tool okay here now when this tool is vibrating no uh, let us assume that it hits the uh, that web uh, due to the vibration of tool it will hit the your average particle correct and this average particle goes and hit the your work piece okay with a high kinetic energy and due to this or this kinetic energy is nothing but i we know one of m uh, m u square okay, that is formula so here the m will be the your mass of average particle and v will be the velocity of uh, with which it is hitting uh, hitting uh, to this work piece okay uh, okay so due to that hitting or we can call uh, due to the hammering action it will erode the material from your top surface of your work piece okay now you can see here uh, we have the tra uh, transfer winding okay and the, this is a concentrator okay which move up and down at a high frequency okay so and there is a nozzle okay which is uh, supplying the, this is a called nozzle and this is uh, uh, supplying the abrasivity between this tool and your workpiece here please note down your tool is not in physical contact with your workpiece there is always small gap okay again you can see uh, here uh, in large uh, view of this particular portion okay whatever i have shown the red no so this portion you can see here okay here a uh, tool is there then slurry and then you have the workpiece okay and during this process overcut uh, is created through which the slurry uh, has to uh, go out okay this is called the overcut okay through which uh, slurry will go and hence uh, the additional material is removed during this process okay and overcut means what it is gap between the your tool surface and the side surface of your workpiece okay and the some material is removed from the top uh, that uh, tool also okay during this process so thus uh, you will uh, find the material is uh, continuously removed okay from your tool okay. so here whatever the shape you want uh, on your work is no so same uh, shape or inverse replica we can call uh, of uh, your cavity to be on your work is no so that cavity or this that uh, shape you have to give on your tool firstly okay because if you give that uh, inverse replica to the tool then and then only it will produce on your work piece now i will explain the working principle of this ultrasonic machine okay so uh, we have seen that the uh, electrical energy of high frequency is uh, uh, converted into the mechanical vibrations okay through the your transducer unit okay so these mechanical vibrations are transmitted to the abrasive particles in the slurry okay via energy focusing device okay and that energy focusing device means what your concentrator uh, or you can call horn or uh, that tool assembly okay concentrator or tool holder or tool assembly or horn everything is same it is called energy focusing devices so i once again repeat mechanical vibrations are transmitted to the your abrasive particles which are present in the slurry Okay, via energy focusing device and that is known as horn or tool assembly or concentrator further uh, that transducers are basically again uh, as we know that there are two types one is the magnetostructive type of transducer which has certain characteristics that is a low efficiency but it can produce uh, high power and another hand we have another type of transducer it is called piezoelectric type transducer okay both you can use Use. okay uh, the piezoelectric transducer has uh, having high energy efficiency uh, but they do not require any cooling okay so this is a no heat uh, damage okay there is no heat damage if you use the piezoelectric type transducer okay but the problem is that uh, 
uh, its power capacity is very low so but uh, in case of magnetic switch to type transistor most of time you uh, require cooling arrangement uh, it adds to the cost of your whole system okay and uh, but the some of the researcher have proposed that uh, when abrupt particles are hitting the your work piece you no know, so that time erosion may take place into one or more of uh, three uh, different modes and that erosion means what in uh, in one mode there will be the erosion in second mode okay this is called a co a colliding on the or sliding of your eyebrow particle in the in the third mode of that erosion what will happen small scale uh, that removal action will be there by exciting the your uh, that your eyebrow particle okay so that erosion will take place so this is a working principle understood now uh, i will give two minutes to draw this diagram you can uh, draw this block diagram as well as this one so firstly i will give time to uh, draw this block diagram so within two minutes you have to write this huh? All of you, please draw this diagram. Don't leave meeting this. Okay, in between only. Not draw this diagram. The same pattern. Okay. 
actually this is a schematic diagram of uh, setup of ultrasonic machine after this we'll uh, start with one by one uh, elements function of every element we'll see okay how you will get the waves okay then how it is going to convert into the uh, mechanical vibrations okay having the frequency ultrasound frequency okay then the role of the concentrator or purpose of concentrator then average use Now let us discuss the various elements of the your ultrasonic machining setup. Okay, just to have seen the setup. Now, which are the elements? So here I have listed that a sine wave generator. Okay, that wave generator. Then transducer. Then tool holder, tool, and abrasives. Okay, so these are the elements. Now let us discuss one by one in this. The first is the sine wave generator. so the sine wave generator normally converts uh, your 60 hertz uh, power supply uh, which which we normally have in the our uh, any lab okay as well as our home okay and uh, to convert that 60 hertz power supply into frequency having more than or equal to 16 kilohertz so the purpose of sine wave uh, generator to convert 60 hertz power supply into frequency having more than or equal to 16 kilohertz okay so this is the purpose of sine wave generator then uh, we have the transducer so this transducer uh, uses a uh, piezoelectric crystal okay which can have power up to uh, 900 watts Okay, as well as having the efficiency in particular case is very high. Uh, that is up to 95 percent is efficiency is there. Okay, of uh, this piezoelectric crystal uh, type transducer. I am going to explain about the magnetic to type transducer also. Again, uh, they are also used uh, for ultrasonic cleaning and uh, some other application purpose. Okay, these piezoelectric crystals. Okay, which are now normally they are used in uh, non-destructive testing purpose. Okay, you can use even in a very small, uh, very low power uh, ultrasonic machining uh, purpose also. So this is the first uh, piezoelectric crystal transducer, and uh, second we have the magneto strip to uh, type transducer. Okay, uh, having uh, it, it is having capacity up to 2.4 uh, kilowatt. Okay, but here uh, as I have already mentioned, the efficiency is very low, uh, 20% to 30% efficiency is there but in case of this magneto strip tube type transducer you always require cooling okay and so it becomes essential okay normally uh, but again uh, maximum amplitude of vibrations uh, that you can obtain uh, in case of this magneto strip tube type and that is up to 25 micron okay so that much ma maximum amplitude of vibration you can achieve because we require high frequency okay ultrasonic frequency but uh, your uh, magnitude amplitude of uh, vibration should be less okay low so for that purpose you can go magneto shift to type transducer then we have the <coughs> another element that is tool holder 
so there are two types of tool holders are there in case of this also one is known uh, no, known as non amplifying tool holder and another is it is called amplifying a tool holder okay again in that in case of this amplifying tool holder uh, you can get a 10 times higher amplitude of uh, vibration as compared to non amplifying type of your tool holder okay uh, it uh, transmit energy normally okay this okay again the uh, the amplitude of vibration can be as high as uh, 1 micron to 0.1 uh, micron okay then another uh, point is that tool holder material okay and its property so in that again no commonly used uh, some tool holder materials i have mentioned here that is monel metal you can use then titanium or stainless steel so these are the materials uh, we can use for your tool holder okay because it have the good acoustic properties and uh, resistance to faulty cracking okay again it uh, uh, it should avoid welding Uh, between your tool holder and uh, transducer during the working okay now uh, tool material okay normally in that uh, tool material uh, you can use uh, tool material like uh, mild steel stainless steel brass okay and the main property of the tool material are a uh, high ductility uh, ductility and high wear resistance okay as far as uh, surface conditions are concerned uh, it should have good surface finish okay so there should be no scratches or machining marks on your tool otherwise what happen they will be reflected on your machined work work piece surface okay as well as uh, some uh, fatigue failure may occur uh, in your tool okay because the tool is subjected to the very high frequency uh, load change okay? hence fatigue fail hence we can call a uh, fatigue uh, failure of your tool may take place Okay, and if it has uh, if it has some scratches or machining mark, okay, then that will left on your uh, work piece also. Okay, again the tool design consideration for overcut that should be uh, taken into the account okay, at the time of uh, tool design. Okay, so that uh, you get the desired shape and size of your uh, machine work piece. Okay, you should again you should uh, minimize the fatigue uh, problem by. uh some silver brazing of your tool and uh, your tool holder okay you can minimize the fatigue failure okay so this is about the tool then the uh important that is abrasive okay which type of abrasive we can use. so here you can see there are various kinds of abrasives uh used in case of our ultrasonic machining and some of them are uh alumina that is al2o3 then silica carbide sic and boron carbide b4c okay uh, again the what are the uh, hardness of abrasives are you know so that should be definitely greater than the workpiece hardness otherwise what will happen abrasive itself will fracture or break rather the uh, remove the material from your workpiece okay again in that again selection criteria how to select the abrasive so while selecting the abrasives uh, following points uh, should be taken uh, care of uh, okay such as hardness size of abrasive life of the abrasive and the cost of abrasives okay then uh, what is the workpiece material hardness okay so in that again that uh, workpiece material hardness is again very important i uh, don't know while selecting the abrasive okay, it should also be taken into the consideration including the desired uh, metal removal rate and the surface finish okay uh, in that again low concentration of abrasive is recommended uh, for default drilling or complex cavity okay uh, again in that again um, process performance how to measure the performance to metal removal rate surface finish and accuracy Uh, you can uh, take grain size, mesh size, the okay, average of grain uh, size, or two forty to eighty, and the uh, medium for the slurry you can take water or uh, benzene or uh, glycerol. So these are the mediums we can uh, take for the slurry. Okay, because uh, the out of the averages are there, no, so uh, we have to carry for that. Uh, ca- carry purpose we require carrier medium and normally uh, uh, carrying medium you can select as a water or benzene or uh, glycerol 
okay again in that again low viscosity material or liquid like water is recommended because uh, it can reach to the fine details or complete shapes easily okay and again if it is having high viscosity then what will happen they uh, they may not be able to reach to the fine cavities or fine details on your component okay so that water uh, is recommended for as a carrier medium because having the low viscosity okay but uh, the problem with water carrier medium is that it corrodes the workpiece okay so one has to take this uh, point also into the consideration so uh, this is about the element okay or components you can call Now, uh, next point is the fish bone diameter that is called um, process parameter. Okay, now this process parameter and its event we will see in the next lecture. Okay, now wait. Now, uh, now all of you, please uh, rather than the average user, which average you can use for this. Please write down averages. Now, if you see in the average jet mustang or average water jet mustang or ultrasonic, okay, same averages normally we are in. So, due to that point, I have covered that uh, first point in the average water jet mustang, okay, where we can use the different averages. So, there I have explained this ultrasonic mustang. Now, you can uh, draw this diagram, a fishbone diagram of your ultrasound machine. Okay, through this diagram, you will get the different process parameters which will affect the uh, the performance of your ultrasonic machine. And how to go, uh, evaluate the performance? So, for that purpose, we have some uh, characters, performance characters like material removal rate, tool wear rate, uh, then cutting ratio, surface finish, okay, and the form of geometry. So, please draw this diagram. Okay, and now I will show one uh, animation, animated video regarding working of ultrasonic machining. You can see.
you can see how that uh, tool holder or hard is vibrating okay Now all of you, please write down your roll number in chat box so that I can write your attendance. गौरव तुजापुरकर ऋतिक ताटे प्रेम तिट्टे रोहन गांडोळे रोल नंबर काय तुमचे सर बी बी सिक्स्टी 
Kita Six zero. Ah, okay. Sir, sixty two. Okay, sixty two. Lele, lele, lele. Nineteen, sir, one nine. Okay. Yeah.